Oh yeah. Oh. Hey everybody, it's Charlie and Chris with Daily Motor, and we are excited because we have a surprise Volvo this week. <laughs> it's always a good week when you're a not expecting Volvo. to get to drive a Volvo and you do get to drive a Volvo, specifically a wagon. Yes. Volvo wagon. This, as you know from clicking on the title of this video, and we can leave this open, is a 2000, I believe 23, yeah, this Volvo V60 Cross Country B5. And I see something important on the dashboard. Do you see it? It is the Bowers and Wilkins speaker, I assume is what you're referring oh, to. yes. Yeah. I think, right? I don't wanna... Let's see. Yes, it is Bowers and Wilkins. Which means this has an S-tier sound system. It is painted in sparkly onyx black paint. We're not giving this back. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry Russ at Volvo. We are keeping this because this is a very desirable God, it looks spec. great from the back too. Yeah, it really does. Volvo's got great font, great lettering. Font is important when you're Charlie, so yep. that's Look how quickly that opens. Look, Look at all this back here. space for activities. Very, very low load height because it is a wagon. You got a spare. spare tire, which is very important to a lot of people. Metal tie downs, a cargo cover if you're keeping valuables back here. Cargo nets for your gallons of milk, which Chris is a big fan of, mm -hmm. as am I. What, milk or nuts? Uh, both. Yeah. I suppose. Dual button More action. So nuts. Oh, and. Oh, let's oh it's try got a that. kicky kick. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see if it works. I, I guess, suppose I could have used that to close it, couldn't I? Probably. All right, let's just see. No, I think it's an in out motion. Ah. Yeah. The Fords you used to have to, like, wave them. Yeah, dance your leg. No, it's, it's, it's got to be a very deliberate. Let's see if you can close it with that, too. The answer is yes. Mm hmm. Beautiful Volvo V60 taillights, of course. Back seat test. Now they always deliver the cars to us with the driver's seat all the way back. And even then, look at this. I've got new. Those doors feel nice closing. Yeah, as well. very solid closing. Funk. Oh, this leather feels nice. The yeah, it's pretty. Wilkins. Speaker grills. It almost feels like Land Rover leather, like really high quality. Mm -hmm, very nice, soft and soft smooth leather. Yep. Little cut-ins for our knees. Ooh, big. Big panel, panel roof. Yep, I believe these seats recline. Oh, oh thank you for that. You just whacked me in the head. Okay, no, I guess they do not recline then, but still a good amount of comfort back here. And we have our own climate controls yeah. and two USB-C ports. All right. Good place to be if you're it's a got, It has Apple CarPlay as well. Mm -hmm. This is the B5 powertrain, meaning we're dealing with a mild hybrid two liter turbocharged motor. And I think at this point, they've really been getting the two liter turbos down to a science, so I wouldn't be too worried about them. Chris, do you remember my biggest gripe about Volvos? They all have power manual steering, manual steering columns. Steering columns. Yep. I figured any sort of gripe you had have, would have to do with something like that, but yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the climate controls on the screen Ooh. are also not something I'm super happy I can about. I adjust my bolster on this side. Oh, sorry. Also, every control you I do was gonna is... Say, <laughs> Ruining the screen. Yeah. Oh, crystal shift knob. Dude, the Swedes are great. Volvo does great steering weight. It's nice. It's probably very light steering it's in this car. Light. Yes. Chris and I appropriately are going to drive this to Starbucks. Yes, we are, because that is the most important test. Because what happened was, is I lit a candle in the Daily Motor office. Yeah, and it, it was a Starbucks. very small, a fall smelling candle and it inspired Chris to want Starbucks. Can you make it so the seat doesn't go up on the screen when you're messing Probably. With it? I would hope so. Uh, nice digital gauge cluster there. Can't wait to hear this S tier sound system. Mm -hmm. so. Chris and I are pretty much just going to turn our recording equipment off here soon so that we can listen to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pair my phone so we can actually listen to some, yes. some good uh, Gen Z music because yep. I know how much you love that. That way Chris can turn it up and then I can turn it slightly <laughs> back down. Good power. It's very grunty, low, torquey power. Also, we have a little battery indicator, which is interesting because this is just a mild hybrid system, but I guess that's just to show you that we're filling up the mild hybrid. Nice wood in here too. Ooh, feel that wood. Chris is 
tongue and it. Okay. I didn't say mine. I said feel that wood. Yeah. It does feel nice. It's, it feels it's like it feels like you're touching a tree. Yeah, it really does. It's lovely. 510 miles on my estimated range left. That's Fantastic. beautiful. As someone who just had to fill up a Mazda CX-5 17 times last week, you're yeah, I know that's, that's that. exciting. Well, you're gonna find out when you run the fuel economy test on this how. Uh, yeah, or if I take it to Alyssa's parents' house. That's true. I might drive it the whole weekend. Well, you'll be, you'll be between uh, that and the Tesla Model Y. Yep. In between this, I should say. And a yeah, Tesla this Model is y. this is definitely getting up there for me. Does this car have drive modes? Yes, but they're probably in the infotainment. So you have to go here back home, and then you have to go here, and then you probably go to driving, and then you go to drive modes. And it only, only has off-road mode. mode. No, you know what? I'm actually okay with that because I don't think... Here's the thing. That person didn't even stop. Oh, that's good. <laughs> GM. The, the Maverick has a bunch of drive modes, and Alyssa's never used any of them. Well... And, and yeah. I was thinking about... I, I just... I think most people who just... Wow, you're probably the first person to have ever opened that. Yeah, I think so. Oh no. Oh, that's a, that's definitely a downside. <laughs> I think most people who buy a car like this don't want drive modes. They just want to get in and drive their car. They don't want to customize their driving experience, whatever silly little nuance there is. I mean, no one's no one's driving a, a B5 V60 cross country in sport mode. Also, can we... Ooh. Why do you need sport mode when you can just put the throttle down like that? <laughs> it took so long to open. Well, it's it large, like still opening. Yeah, it's, it's very large. It's tinted nicely. Mm -hmm. You probably can't even notice that it's open. What does this button do? It turns on all the interior lights. What do the message bubbles do? They probably call up Volvo so you can tell them how nice their car is. Probably. Ooh, a fist. not often that we go on the highway for the intro of our, our uh, drive. Does yes, this have... We have an important mission today. Yeah. Okay, we have Volvo's pilot assist, which usually works quite well. You can see my hands are not on the wheel, and it is slowing down for the GM product in front of me. Okay, now it's asking me to hold the wheel, so I'm going to change lanes. It speeds right back up to my desired speed. Ah. Touchscreen cleaning cloth. That's nice. Thank you, Volvo. It's very thoughtful. I am curious to see how CarPlay works in this car because I haven't experienced the Android automotive screen with CarPlay yet. Oh, maybe we'll, we should connect by phone. Yeah, maybe we should. Or my phone. We can listen to some millennial music. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, any more surface level observations on the V60 before we depart from the viewers? Uh, I want to see what else is in the glove box. Leather care wipes as well, mm -hmm. which are sealed, so we won't open those. We just passed a Volvo truck. I wonder if you felt connection noise. Look at how nice that owner's manual is. That is a nice one. Is. Very nicely packaged. I don't know how to open it, but... How would you open this? Okay, viewers, we're going to catch up with you at the end of the week with our Volvo V60 experience. By then, Chris may have opened the owner's I got manual. It. <laughs> well, yes. If you'd like to, if you'd like to end the the, the first impressions, then we can. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to end the first impression section of the video <laughs> now, or if you want us to wait until I and if we reorganize get, the glove box. If we get more comments telling us to end now, I will edit the video in YouTube in the YouTube Studio and cut out this section. Today we're doing some moving. My girlfriend just bought a house and that means all of her stuff has to be moved into it. And instead of going and swapping cars with Charlie and using the Chevy Traverse that we also have this week, I elected to keep the Volvo V60 and prove to all of you that wagons are still functional. You can carry as much as you need in a station wagon and you don't need an SUV. So what I have here, ugh is a King mattress. You can't really tell it's a King mattress because it's from the year 2022 and it's from Amazon and they ship it in a vacuum sealed bag that makes it roll up and, and whatnot. But what I'm gonna do now is put it in the back of the Volvo V60 to show that it can indeed carry a King mattress as well as many other things as you, sell, as you shall see as well. But first, 
we have to put the seats down. And there is an umbrella in here as well that I'm just now seeing. I don't know whose umbrella that is, but we'll leave it there. Oh dear. Okay. Automatically folding headrests. That is good to see. Apologize if I'm out of breath. I did have to carry this King mattress out here all by myself. Okay, those are now folded down. So now we probably have to remove this out of the way. Probably have to remove the cargo shield here. And get that out of the way. How do we think that that comes out? Oh, just like this. We'll leave that here and hopefully not forget it. Right, okay, so now, uh, okay. why don't we scooch this over here and Oh yeah, oh. as you can see, the King Mattress has fit in the Volvo V60. Now I'm gonna go grab some other things, fill this car up, and uh, show you just how practical it really is. Really saving wagons with this review is, is what we're doing. Okay, forgive me for being out of breath, but the V60 is pretty much packed up. We've got that King mattress, we've got a box spring, we've got a couple other really long boxes, we've got an air fryer, we've got pots and pans, two cases of water and carbonated water because we're Gen Zs. We've got another box here sitting on top, we've got a box full of towels there, and then it is now a one-seater, but we also have a comforter up here. Let me take you around to the other side because I have also crammed some things in through that door. And this is not optimized. Obviously this, this box is overflowing so it isn't able to, uh, to shut. We've got another box under there. I'm pretty impressed with the cargo space in this V60. I've gotta say, I fit just as much in this as I would in probably a similarly sized SUV. So very good stuff. And uh, yeah, see how many loads it takes to move today. But so far, so good. Oh my God, the Volvo is so far away. Well, here's the thing. Why is it so far away? Because I'm trying to hide it so that Volvo can't pick it back up. <laughs> I, I was just saying earlier this week that I never want to give this car back. We need to have one of these as a long-termer. I'm hoping that Volvo will drive by and they'll be like, oh, I guess we can't find it. Yeah. I guess they just get to keep it. <laughs> so I parked it back here. I was saying after literally spending three hours in it, I was like, this is my car of the year. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is quite good. Coming at it from the rear, a great vantage point of the V60. It's really not a bad angle of this car. No, it's a very pretty vehicle. Do you have the key? Yes, you do. Look at that. Beautiful interior. Mm, it smells good. It does, even after a whole weekend of farts. And we actually didn't eat in this car, but. Very comfortable seats. You know what I noticed? Even after a few hours in these seats, never once was I sort of like doing the kind of sit to the side, change up your seating fit, <laughs> because the seats are so supportive. Yeah. Oh, man. Why doesn't everybody just... Oh. Where does he come from? I don't know, but I'm going to have to address that because it's literally right under our wheel now. <clears throat> it's a good thing you drop kicked it because otherwise it <laughs> would have still been under the wheel. Exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I did a little video talking about why we both love Volvos for road trips. But what it really is, is that we just love Volvos for everything. Yeah, it's... And it's, a road trip is when we need to spend extended time in a car. But what the Volvos do so, so well is take out the bad things about driving, but leave the good. So it's super easy to steer, but yet the steering is still yeah. decently weighted and communicative. It's super easy to sit in, but it doesn't mean that it's just 
like forgetful and, and, and that you can't actually like engage a bit with the car, it's still just a nice place to be. Right. The technology works so well, the sound system is so good, that it's not forgettable as in, I just want to pretend I'm not even in a car, it's forgettable as in going over that speed bump. You notice it, but it doesn't jar you. Right. I love the steering in Volvo. It's, it's so just good. the best. I wish every car steered like a Volvo. Well, maybe not sports cars, but every car that you have to spend more than a few hours in it. Correct. That's that is what I what I meant by that. Yeah, and it's it's always a good week here when we have a Volvo because they're just such a pleasure. No drive modes because drive modes are unnecessary. If you want to go faster, you simply <laughs> push your foot down further. <laughs> Somebody asked me in the comment section recently and got a bunch of upvotes that uh, they noticed we didn't do a zero to 60. Can I, can I go around here? We didn't do the zero to 60 test on the RS3 in RS mode. Do we think it would have gone faster if we had? Maybe. I, well, I, I said no, because full throttle's still full throttle. Yeah. It's not all of a sudden like unlocking 30 horsepower or anything yeah. like that. And I talked to Alyssa about it on the live drive. Never once has she used, I might've said this in the beginning of the Volvo video, never once has she used drive modes in our car. And I think that's, the right answer for people who buy a car like this, like this V V60, is they're just going to get in and drive. They're not going to be like, hmm, should I be in eco mode? Should I be in trip? Polestar engineered mode? Yeah, no, they just want to get in <laughs> and they want to put their foot down and get to their destination and get their comfortable, um, heated, cooled, good good sound system. I mean, they just want an, uh, an enjoyable experience and that's what this provides. And it's even further enhanced by the new mild hybrid system in this car. So you still have the turbocharged two liter engine, but you have a small battery, and I looked it up, it is a battery, not okay. a not a capacitor, it's a battery. Not a you, flux capacitor. Exactly. As you slow down, it adds a little juice to that battery, and as you get going again, it, it uses it, and you kind of hear it running around. And it provides two main benefits. I mean, technically, it provides a little bit of a fuel economy benefit, but it's not that dramatic. What it does more so is adds to the smoothness of the car. So as I come into this roundabout here, I get a little indication that it's adding juice into the battery. And then when I get back on the accelerator, accelerate out, it's filling in those little gaps in between shifts so that each shift is essentially imperceptible, super, super smooth. And if I have to come to a stop and the engine turns off for the stop start to save fuel, it has a generator rather than a starter motor. So when the car comes back to life, it just sort of awakens. It just, yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, the engine's That's running. That's the same again. thing when you start it, just like yep. even a cold start or anything. It's just on. It's and it just is, on. it's a 48 volt hybrid system as well, which, I mean, 48 is much higher than 12 volts. So it has a lot more yeah. punch. Kind of sounds like your escape when it starts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the escape is almost as good as this Volvo. <laughs> Yeah, and I know we talked about this earlier in the review, but interior materials in here are fabulous. And I literally, I was going out driving this car just so I could listen to this sound system. So good. I would, I went out for multiple drives just so I could put that into studio driver and just... Yep. Mm. And not only is it good at high volumes, but it's also good at soft volumes, which is. I, which is important. Yeah. Because driving around with Alyssa, she didn't want the music blasting, but we wanted to listen to some music, so we just had yeah. it on. Emily doesn't have a choice. <laughs> and it, it sounded good. You, you get to hear, there's certain times you listen to a song and you hear drum elements go all the way across the yeah. front of the car and you hear yeah, it in different cool. spots and it's crisp. So, so good. This new Android Automotive system is so snappy. They've really done a good job with how it works, how quickly it works. CarPlay actually has a really good layout. I kind of like yeah. the vertical setup. It works better than the vertical setup in something like a new Ford vehicle. Right. If I had any complaints, especially after doing a bit of a road trip in the car, not a ton of space for stuff. If you fill this up with a, a drink or two, all of a sudden, where are your phones and your sunglasses? Yeah, you everything. Go, there's no sunglasses. Everything went here. here for me. Yeah. 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 But with two people, that would it would fill up quite quickly. Fortunately, water bottles fit pretty well in the side door pockets. Right. Also, as much as I love the wagon, I would seriously consider it a sedan, especially if I were going to be on the highway a lot, because I really? think the wagon's a bit louder. You can hear road oh, okay. noise from that cavern. Gotcha. Whereas I okay. think in a sedan, that would be a little bit. Yeah, it would drown it out a little better. Yep. 
It's very uncharacteristic for you to, to say that you want a sedan, though. I know. It's and it's strange. It's Well, it's twofold. It's the fact that the, I think the sedan would be a bit quieter, and also that in the sedan you can get the plug-in hybrid, whereas you can't with this unless you're paying for the Polestar. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. So the sedan would be cheaper for a better powertrain and quieter. But I do... completely... Yeah, I guess we'll actually... You can just you just drive. It's okay. You don't want one more little. Uh, no, it's a, it's all right. I don't I don't even want to anymore because then I'll just get sad that it's leaving. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. But um, Google works so well. It could be okay, something Google. Like... Take me to the Buick dealership. Nothing out here. Okay, Todd Wenzel Buick GMC in Westland. It works Buick so well every time, and it, it says what you said mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah. So does this mean we're gonna we're gonna trade this V60 in for a Buick? Well, you said that you wanted an Enclave, so I'm taking you there. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a LeSabre on the used car lot. Cancel my navigation. Stopping navigation. It's so effortless. Turn on the passenger heated seat. Oh, okay, there it is. Got it. Turning on the seat heater. Thank for you. The front That's passenger. your punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's kind of chilly out today, so I think I'm gonna leave. Yeah, I'm, I'm mind blasting. It feels great. The heated steering wheel has three stages of heat, which is excellent because I was able to do my entire drive home earlier this week with the heated steering wheel on one. And that's good because most cars it's either on or off. So your hands are either on fire or they're on ice. Whereas this, I had just a nice little mm, yeah. every time mm. I touch the wheel. Yeah. yeah. And because the highway driving assist was so good, only occasionally did I need to touch the wheel, but then every time I did, it was like a... Oh, it's, yes, it's, nice. it's like holding a nice cup of hot coffee. Yes. Yes. Absolutely right. Only other complaint? Manual just steering column. Oh yes, that's just a Volvo thing. Right? I know. It's like the one, oh, actually two, because these don't oh, extend. Oh, those don't extend, right? Yeah. So if Volvo could get those two things right, then I, oh, and no camera mirror. Volvo does put its money into other things, and I get yeah. that, because this, this compared to something like an E-Class wagon, this is much, much better value. Really, this would be more comparable to a C-Class, I guess, but uh, we don't get the C-Class wagon here in the States. Yeah, how much is this car? This particular car is like 60 grand. Yeah, just over 60 it's grand. It's worth it, worth every penny. $60,000 sound system with a free car attached. Yeah, I know, and I agree with you, but I was talking to Alyssa again as, as we were finishing up our trip yesterday. That CX-5, it exists, and it's just sitting there, way back in the back corner of, of, your, of your parking lot going, you could have me and an extra $20,000. <laughs> I would still have this. I would I would pay twenty grand extra. Well, the thing is, you can, I mean, you can have this for fifty. Not with the power. But you don't get the sound system, system though. And I, I spec'd one out, and it was mm -hmm. like fifty nine grand. Okay. All right, I did so red. I think I I picked this interior. I would get with I a red, get red as well. Yeah, yeah. And I do appreciate how you have the S, you have the V, and you have the XC. So you really can choose your flavor of Volvo. Yeah, uh, I'd be curious to just drive an S sixty. Mm -hmm. Well, you almost did get to drive an S90 for a while until you mutilated the tires. I did mutilate the tires. That was the worst uh, worst I've ever done to a tire. Well, that's because, for some reason, Volvo thought 21-inch wheels was appropriate on a luxury sedan in Michigan. Yeah, what was the sidewall on that car? 30? Yeah, essentially nothing. Maybe 35. Whereas this, being the cross-country model, got 19s, and I believe you can get 18s base. Yeah. yeah. That would be the way to go. That car. I know. I was really looking forward to doing a road trip in that S90. I know. Uh, unfortunately, was not mm -hmm. able to do so. That's okay. Yeah, I have very, very little bad to say about this car, and I really do think if you're in the luxury car market space whatsoever, you really need to be checking out Volvo's. If you're not, you're doing your dis yourself a disservice because every year they just continue to get better. Yeah. I feel like this sound system has gotten better. I do too. I feel it's like just they've so, just tuned it so to perfection. Good. It really is. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Even even the Burmester and Mercedes cars aren't as good as this, in my opinion. And the good thing about Volvos is they're all good. It's all so consistent. Whereas you can get into a Mercedes C-Class with a not very good system, and then you can get into an S-Class with an amazing sound system. So there's just a lot more variability. Whereas even the Harman Kardons and Volvos, very good. Yeah, like A-tier. Yeah. Yeah. Does this not have the little Swedish flag expansion joint? No, it doesn't. Huh. It's got it on the seat, though. I wonder why they tag. got rid of that. That's interesting. You may you may only get that on the Polestar cars. 
Because it used to, it served a purpose. Because this is one big, oh, right. unbroken they piece may, of aluminum. They may have changed. This might, maybe, maybe it's like plastic, plastic now or something. Now. Sad. Yeah. Don't buy it. Did you, have you? Did you ever? And maybe you already knew this beforehand, but did you uh, figure out how to fold the mirrors in? No. Oh, you probably twist the thingy. Nope. Both buttons. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Someone on the live drive helped out with that. That's kind of neat. Isn't that neat? Because I was like trying to. I was like, what? Well, I can't. Nope. Push both at the same time. See, the engine's off right now. Yeah. But if you get out, it should just shut off. It will, which can be annoying sometimes. But I was going to point out how to start it up. You just. And it sounds like your escape hybrid. <laughs> Unfortunately, Chris and I must bid adieu to the Volvo V60 cross country. He loves it. I loved it. We think you'd love it too. There's the thumbnail right there. If you're in the market, we highly, highly recommend picking one of these up or at least test driving it. And if you're an owner, let us know. Are there any annoyances? Are there any reasons why people shouldn't be considering the V60? Because we think there are virtually none. Thank you all so much for watching. We are Chris and Charlie with Daily Motor and as always Volvon. Mm -hmm.